Hello friends, welcome to BMH Learning. In this video, we are going to discuss about signaling pathways which are controlled by ubiquity nation. The first pathway is WNT signaling pathway. First thing is introduction to these pathways. In these, in these pathways, a critical component like a transcriptional factor, this would be ubiquitinated first. And after that, this would be proteolytically cleaved. Okay, the second thing, what is this ubiquitination? Simply, this process is the degradation of proteins for various purposes. In this case, in these pathways, this means to keep the pathway in off state so that it should not be started. Now, there are three pathways which involve ubiquitination. The first one we have is the WNT pathway and in this video we are only going to discuss this pathway. The second one we have hedgehog pathway. The third one is the NF kappa B. Before we discuss the pathway, I want to tell you something. Believe me, if you understand this simple concept, it would be very easy for you to grab the main concept behind this pathway. Let's assume there is a central player in this pathway named as X protein. This is a transcriptional factor which will go into the nucleus and initiate the transcription of the genes. This X protein is surrounded by a bunch of protein or we can say a complex of protein named as Y, Z, N, P, whatever you name them. Okay, now this complex of protein is what making this X protein inactive or rendering it inactive. Now this protein is not able to go into the nucleus and initiate the transcription of the genes. This is when there is no ligand bound to the receptor. Okay. Now suppose the ligand has bound. What would happen? This complex of proteins, it would disintegrate. This would break. And the result is the inhibition which is caused by this complex on this protein, this is released and our protein is free and go into the nucleus, can go into the nucleus, initiate the transcription of the genes. This would be same in WANT or WNT, hedgehog pathway, but a little bit difference you would see in NF kappa B. Now let's concentrate on this WNT. We will discuss all about these in the next videos. Okay. Now let's discuss the mechanism. So the central player in this pathway is beta catenin. Initially when the ligand is not bound to the receptor, this beta catenin is bound to a complex formed by scaffolding protein known as auxin. <coughs> this complex contains other proteins like APC in red color and enzymes like GSK3 which is the glycogen synthase kinase 3 and CK1 or Sazin kinase 1. Now what is the function of these enzymes? These enzymes they phosphorylate they phosphorylate the beta catenin. Okay now this phosphorylated beta catenin or the phosphorylated sites on the beta catenin they act as the binding sites for another enzyme known as TRCP ubiquitin ligase. Okay, so this TRCP binds two of these phosphorylated <coughs> sites. One thing you have to note here is that this TRCP only bind to the beta catenin when it is phosphorylated. Okay, so the binding of this ligase, ubiquitin ligase, to the beta catenin tags it tags the beta catenin that it is ubiquitinated okay the ubiquitinated beta catenin is then sent to the proteasome for degradation okay so that this degraded beta catenin cannot go into the nucleus and initiate the transcription of the genes there is something more to know in the nucleus, there is TCF, a transcriptional factor which is bound to the target genes, but it is not able to function. Uh, one reason is that 
the beta catenin is not here the other reason is this grow protein which is acting as a transcriptional rep repressor and it is not allowing the transcription to occur in the second case the binding of the ligand w and t to the receptor frizzled or fz and the co-receptor lrp allows the enzymes gsk3 and ck1 to phosphorylate the cytosolic domain of lrp receptor the phosphorylated phosphorylated sites on the lrp receptor they acts as the binding site for protein axin the scaffold protein axin so what is happening here axin was initially here the ligand binding results in the phosphorylation of this lrp receptor by these enzymes the axin comes from here and binds to these phosphorylated sites so what just happened whole complex is broken this is disintegrated this is disrupted okay these enzymes or the other proteins they were functioning when they were together now this is broken the enzyme ck1 and the gsk3 is not able to phosphorylate beta catenin and if this beta catenin is not phosphorylated the enzyme trcp ubiquitin ligase cannot attach itself to the beta catenin that means the beta catenin cannot go for proteosomal degradation this means our beta catenin here it is free if it is free it can go into the nucleus and along with other transcriptional factors like lgs pigo and cbp and this tcf they bind to the target genes here and activate the transcription of the genes.